Um, but the first question is, at what age do you think it's okay to date? Um, you want to, let, let, let's have Rita go first. So, I don't think there's an age um, that you go, okay, at 16, you should be able to date. Or at 18, you should be able to date. I think there are 40-year-olds who should not be able to date. Um, so, for us, what we felt was appropriate um, was to base it upon some maturity factors. And we talked about that a little bit last week um, in terms of we wanted to ensure that when our kids navigated this area of relationships um, on a romantic level, and that's, that's sort of the barometer for us for dating, we didn't kind of adopt this mentality that you, my, you know, my girls can go out with some guy and go head to the movies and that sort of thing. For us, it was about intentionality in getting to know someone toward marriage. Um, and so that doesn't mean that there was a pressure on kind of thing. It wasn't like we thought somebody was a potential if they went out. That's not how we looked at it. Um, so it wasn't like that, but it was the notion that they could go out and do some of these things if they could actually get married, because we felt very strongly about um, not awakening love too soon, <laughs> that moving in that too soon and that intimacy um, would, would create some difficult situations for them that would make it either um, hard to maintain uh, purity um, or um, frustrate them, distract them. So, and I went to lunch, and, and I'll, I went to lunch with my son today, who's 26 and married. And I asked him what he thought on that. Um, I just said, you know, you know how we did it with you. Looking back, what would you say? And um, he had gotten involved in an early relationship in his late teens. And he said he wished that he hadn't, because even though you know, he was very um, guarding in terms of trying to guard his heart and, and his purity. He was very intentional about that. He felt like that was a season of distraction that took away from really um, focusing on, on the things that he should have been focusing on at that time. So, my thoughts. Um, before you pass up the mic, okay. um, I think it'd be cool for, because I already know some of these things, like how, so... Kieran. Kyron. Kyron. I knew I messed it up. That's time. okay. He's used so, to it. So, Kyron, Kayla, Samara. Samara. So, how I, have you had that conversation with Aviel yet? <laughs> I mean, I would say probably <laughs> ten, but whatever. But like, seriously, I know I know that you said you've you've had a different conversation with each one. So yes. I would say I think you could talk about that. So we feel very much that it's very personal. We don't want to take the Holy Spirit's leading out of it. The whole, God knows each one of you better than, than you know yourselves or than we know, our, we know you. And I didn't want to discount and just blanket, this is what we're going to do for our kids. We've, we're very purposeful in trying to speak directly to each one of them when they sort of came upon this place, when we saw that maybe there was some interest where we saw that, that um, for instance, we felt like Kyron maybe was sort of moving in something a little bit soon. Um, and we, and we tried to navigate that. We knew he was responsible. We felt very much that we could trust, um, that, but it was also, we had some reservations and, um, and we tried to figure that out. But we, we really sat down with each one of our kids and said, what do you think this should look like for you? And what are you willing to agree with us on? Um, and so it was a little bit different for each one of them. We knew Kayla. We knew what Kyron wanted. And we knew that he wanted to go to college. And we knew that there were some things he wanted to pursue first. And so this is why we really wanted to push that off and see if we could, we could um, let that be later. We knew that Kayla um, really wanted to be married and have a family. And this was her greatest life goal. And everything was going to be outside of that. Um, and so we knew that she had been moving in that direction. We knew that she was, she was mature in her faith. Um, she was mature in being able to determine someone else's character. Um, and that it fit into where she was in life. 
Um, and so we just feel like it's it's very personal and, and not the same for each child. So we would never say, well, you know, well, Kyron got to do this or Kayla got to do this when Samara, you know, she's 16. Um, it really doesn't matter what her brother and sister got to do. We are going to base it upon where she is and what, um, what we see in her as to what that's going to look like and what her goals in life are. So did that, did that answer that's your good. question? That's good. Okay. Chad and Joyce, respectively together or individually? Thank you. How can you top what she just said? <laughs> Um, I was thinking all day today that, um, well, one, that Chad and I haven't overly discussed what our rules are going to be. We, we don't. We'll be well. handling it child by child. And so, yeah, we've had discussions with our oldest. Don't want to mention any names. <laughs> um, or, that or stare at them in the yeah, audience. As, I mean, as situations arise, we've had discussions. Um, so I, yeah, like Rita said, I don't think that there's an there's an age because there's a lot of things that that come into play. I mean, you can't just say sixteen is it or seventeen is it or eighteen is it. Yeah, the maturity thing I think is a huge thing. Your level yeah. of responsibility. What your parents say. What your parents yeah, say is right. Things. Yes. Real quick, too. When we say maturity, when I say maturity, I'm not necessarily thinking in terms of, oh, one was more mature at a particular age, but in terms of, two, knowing what you're, uh, being honest about what your weaknesses are, being honest about where you are. If you're someone who you know is insecure and you know that you're going to maybe, maybe need something a little too much or maybe just thrive a little too much on being liked or being um, thought of as you know, oh, he likes me. If you know what your weaknesses are and you're honest about that, then, you know, I feel like you can partner with your parents and, and be honest about, I know that's really, really hard because you want a lot of freedom, um, but your parents, you know, do see those things and, and don't want to necessarily restrict. So it's not about maturity, but maturity in certain areas, not as a whole blanket of things like, oh, if you can't handle this, then, you, you know, you might be really spiritually mature in one area, but really feel kind of insecure. And and so that might be something you need to wait on because it can get you into trouble. Does that make sense? Are you adding something? Okay, we'll come back. <laughs> I just wanted to know for future reference. <clears throat> um, um, so I was raised in a pretty similar home that Rita's described. So my parents are kind of very similar to that. They actually taught us about courtship. <laughs> it's from like the 1800s. Um, and um, so with that, really, it was, just, it was pretty much kind of the same thing. It was very like individually based. It was based on where we were all at. My oldest brother, he's 10 years older than me. So that was kind of their experiment child. And they realized pretty quickly they did not want to repeat what how what he went through because he started dating his wife at 16 years old and they did get married and they did wait they did their you know they did great but he was the most miserable 16 year old like ever um and why because he was trying so hard to do the right things all the time and it was oh. becoming more and more hard temptation was hard you know he wanted to follow after god but he also knew how he felt about this girl and so it was such a frustrating situation to be in, and 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 one thing I would like to add on his behalf, yes, um, Lyndon could not be a high school boy. He couldn't have fun. I graduated with him. He wow. couldn't have fun with us. He couldn't hang out with us because he was always with her. So like, I'm not saying that that was a bad thing because let's like, be honest. The thing that I told you guys last week, like when you know that this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with, yeah, you should let go of all your friends. You should do that. stuff. So you should choose that person. But at 16, he let go of all of his friends. He didn't do anything with us and just hung out with her all the time. So to, to his great, great job, Lyndon. <laughs> really. I mean, seriously. So show him seriously, this. great job. So but, you yeah. know, he, he wasn't able to be a guy at 16. You know what I mean? He was already married. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
And so, you know, yeah. that's, I just want to add that quickly. Yeah, so um, my brother, um, Andy, who's the middle one, he, there's five of us kids, he remembers, Lyndon was just a wall away from him, and he remembers hearing him just, like, crying at night because he was just miserable. And Lyndon would never, you know, tell us that, but Andy oh. heard it. So um, anyway, so everything worked out, obviously. Like, they got through it, and, um, and God really blessed them, you know, four boys later, every, like, they're doing great. But it was really hard. So my parents saw that, and so they just kind of readjusted things as they went down the line. Um, and it sometimes it does look different for girls than guys, too, how parents might do things. Because um, we're totally wired differently, and we need different boundaries sometimes. So, And different covering and different protection and things like that. So anyway, um, I, just, I think I just echo what's been said. I think it is an individual thing. I think that's how we're going to do that with our kids. We're not just going to say, this is the age. Go have fun. We're going to like base it on their maturity level, um, where they're at in their walk with the Lord. That is such a huge deal. Um, Cause if he's not number one, it's going to mess up everything else. That's the absolute most important thing you can do, um, when you're looking for that. And, um, and I think also just kind of gauging, um, what, again, if they understand their weaknesses, like that was a big deal. So God knew I wasn't ready until I was 26 years old. I'm really sorry to tell you that. And Skip was 31. So yeah, I mean, that's what it was. He took a lot longer to get ready for me. So um, no, so like 35, I think yeah, I was. Oh, that's right. I keep yeah. forgetting that. Okay. Yeah. So you know, God knew what we each needed. So even God did it, does it differently with us when he brings the spouse, you know. So I think it is just based on individual things. So I wouldn't say that there's an age either. Well, I want to get into that wire differently later. But um, real quick, I want to see if this, can you hear my heartbeat? <laughs> I don't know. Did you hear it? Nice. Um, we had a sonogram yesterday, so I think <laughs> Right You're right. So um, you don't want to know what my parents told me, um, honestly. But if we're being truthful, I found a gal I liked in high school. I mean, she was cool. And so uh, I knew she liked me and I liked her. And so I, I said to my parents, would thou bless me with your blessing to date her? And this was um, actually after I graduated high school. This is like going into my freshman year of college, and they said, Skip, we're not going to bless that. Um, we want you to date many people. And um, so I said, okay. So I went to college. There was 13,000 women there. Um, Aaron's holding his breath of where this is I going. Wanna know, <laughs> I want to know how many of those 13,000 you're going to commit to. That's what I want to know. So my point being, um, my parents were of no help. No, they, um, shout out. <laughs> a handful? Out. Yeah, A no. handful? So my parents were saying, we don't want you locked down to this girl that you're not old enough to understand what you want in a woman of God. And so um, very appreciative for the wisdom there. And actually, I'd share with the guys last week. I didn't really, and my one comment on this whole thing is, um, I'm very black and white. So for me, I knew I couldn't date and not make a girl an idol. And so in college, I did not date at all. And most of the women there hated me anyway. So that is not why would I? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this is good. I pray. I I wish we had prayed before we got up on this panel because. Um, you can pray now if you want. Yeah, I, I was praying <laughs> earlier while you guys were talking, but I think that's what I wanted to say. I, I can share more of my other story later, but um, the idol was the big hookup for me. Yeah. So the next question is going to be about, um, and we're going to finish this up, but be thinking, and we'll start with you, no. then to more of your stories. Um, but we're going to talk about, like, what is... What does physical contact look like at this age? Or what should it look like? You know what I mean? And so, like, that's the next question. Continue on with this one, though. Okay. Be thinking. Um, my encouragement to you guys is that um, I remember, like, what it feels like, even though, I mean, it was a little while ago, but I remember what it feels like to be, you know, 16, 17, 
and really, really, really want that, you know? And some of you are there, and some of you are coming into that, so maybe you haven't experienced it yet, or maybe you're experiencing it at a younger age, like that, that happens too. Um, my encouragement is that, like we've been talking about, it's, it's not a number where you turn 16, you're ready, you turn 18, you're ready, whatever. Um, if you wait, you're not going to look back on that period of your life and be like, man, I wish I started dating earlier. I wish I was younger. I wish I had my heart broken when I was younger. That, you won't say that. You will not regret um, investing in yourself, investing in your friendships, investing in going to college, um, whatever it is, investing in your hobbies, whatever it is that you are into, um, the things that enrich your life, obviously investing into your relationship with the Lord. You're not going to look back and regret that. So even though it can be really hard right now, and I totally get it, I remember, I remember because I did not make good choices at that age. Um, and I know now, like, if I could look back, or when, when I look back, um, I was kind of like rewriting my story in my head today. What if I had made, and I had never really gone down that path before, but what if I had made different choices? Um, it was just an interesting trail of thought. And so that's my encouragement that even though it's hard now, you won't look back and regret waiting. Yeah, um, the, the way that I would, I would answer the same question, and, and I don't need to go after that because that was perfectly said. Um, but in the same way as everyone else has gone, I think one thing that me and Angie have discussed is, you know, what do we do? What do we do with Kendall? What do we do with the next one? And what does that look like? What does this look like? And, and, I, and I, the, the thing that caught up in my brain is, so our plan is to send Kendall to public school until a certain time, right? Um, because I feel strongly that, A, we like money, and Greenwood Mennonite takes all your money. <laughs> I should not have said that on camera. <laughs> um, shucks. Isaac, I'm going to need you to delete that. Um, but no, I, I just think that um, I, want, I want Kendall to be able to make up her mind um, until which case where we have seen evidence of where her brain is at, right? And so in the same way as we're going to allow her to essentially tell us where she wants to go to school, because if at, if at age, you know, she goes into middle school and she doesn't have a brain, well, guess what? We're going to have to send her to Greenwood because we need to help her, right? But if, she, if she's a leader and she stands up for herself and she's a strong person and she does all the things that she needs to do, yeah, man, go to public school because you're strong enough to take it, right? And so in the same way, we're going to attack relationships. We're going to attack everything in that same way. Kendall, are you a real person? Can you be trusted with these decisions, or do I, do we have to micromanage everything that you do and protect you from everything, right? Um, I say that because I feel like most of, most of us, yeah, we were more so, I would say, I would say, um, sheltered rather than trusted. That's what I would say. Um, I feel like Overall, we were just kind of said, you know, stay away from the world or, you know, it's going to get you, you know what I mean? And so we created a little bubble and we tried to stay inside. And then as soon as we go off to college, we just go crazy and whatever. Um, thank the Lord. Well, <laughs> I didn't need to go off to college to be crazy, but that's, that's the neither here nor there. Um, I did my own stupid stuff. But my point is that um, we want to give Kendall... Like, like everyone's been saying, we, wanted to, we want to give Kendall an opportunity to prove that she's trustworthy, to prove that she's, um, you know, able to make these decisions. And in the midst of all of them, we're going to have conversations. Like the thing that I want most is for Kendall to be able to talk to us about everything. This happened, that happened, no, there's no judgment, there's no anything other than, all right, Let's talk about that. You know what I mean? Like, hey, well, this happened today. All right, well, let's talk about that. You know what I mean? And so hopefully that's the communication that we set up in our lives. And hopefully that she'll be able to tell us, like, hey, there's this boy, and 
you know, I can take care of that. Don't worry about it. Um, what, ha- what boy? <laughs> what happened to him? Um, but anyway, that's a joke. But anyway, so the next question, and it leads in, and I'll just start off with this one. Um, the reason, the reason um, a, lot of, a lot of us, I'll speak for myself, but I think a lot, of, a lot of us move out of a place where we came from, right? And so I know in my life, um, we, I don't, I don't know how Chad would answer this to what I'm about to say, but like we, we had enough on our plates um, so that our parents generally would have left their hands off. A, like, like we've been saying that there's boys and then there's girls and there's the way that you parent one or the other, I'm not saying which is right or how you should have done it. But I know that I, for one, was left to make my own decisions. We had enough on um, the plate that they just kind of let me do whatever I wanted. Um, and I don't think that that was the best option because I needed help. Seriously. I needed, I, needed, I needed a dad that would tell me, hey, don't be stupid. You know what I mean? Um, but I did it. And I had a lot of girlfriends because I didn't feel like I was loved. So I found love wherever I could find it. Do you understand? I wasn't ready for, I wasn't ready for all of those things that I needed to be ready for. I wasn't the person that we're all talking about. If you're mature, if you're this, I was none of those things. I was a weak kid who was looking for affection and attention from people, right? And so I know that if you create a world where, you know, Kendall isn't looking for that in someone else, well, hopefully, you know, she'll be able to know who she is and she's a princess. Um, and she doesn't have to be someone else's queen princess. She's with us, until which case then she's not. Um, but anyway, my point is that I was that person who was not um, mature, and I looked for all those things in the wrong way, and I went after it way too young. Like I told you guys last week, and I'll just keep talking about it because some things I said to the guys, some things I said when I spoke, but I had a girlfriend from the time I was 16 to the time I was 30, and I never didn't have one from that whole stretch because I didn't know who I was if I didn't have that thing. And I will say this because it leads into the next question. I only had one line, and it was only one, and I made it. I clapped for myself, and I prayed to the good Lord, and I'm just so thankful that I made it. I did. Not by much. I didn't make it by much because I only had one line. I didn't have the line over here that said, hey, if you do this, it's going to mess you up. I didn't have that line. All I had is this one. So my, my encouragement to you guys is do the things that we've been talking about, not because we've set the great example, but because we've known the facts. We know how the things that we've done have messed us up, right? So come from... I speak for myself. These guys are awesome, and they're perfect, and they never made a mistake. But for me, please learn from my mistakes. Please. Because that's why the Lord has put us in a place to tell you, hey, please learn from our mistakes. Because when I was was your age, the only thing they told me was, don't have sex before you're married. That's it. That's all they told us. You know how many little things there are between now and there? too many. And I only had one. No one told me that this one was going to mess me up. No one told me that this one was going to lead you closer to this one. No one tells you that when you do this one, it's going to just like Lyndon crying in his bedroom. No one says that when you say no to these things, like it creates this thing in you, like you can't, no one tells you that. All they say is, hey, just don't do that. So I'm telling you, please make wise decisions. Some of you are in relationships now. Make wise decisions. Some of you are, want to be in a relationship right now. And just make wise decisions. Guys, there's no judgment from us. If you're in a relationship, man, we bless you in that. I hope, I hope that you're serving the Lord and going after the Lord, right? I hope that. Um, we talk from a position of, of waiting, but if you're in that stage and you're, and you're doing it, man, just pray together. Be Chase after the Lord together. That's our hope for you. Um, but from, from my point of view, those are the things that we went after. And, and to answer the question as point blank as, as I can, um, I, I, I said it when I talked, and I'll say it again. Anything that you want your husband or wife to do, not with you, do that with whoever you want. 
anything you want. My opinion is that you don't want your husband or wife doing anything with anyone else. That's my opinion. That's what I would say. That's what I say. Um, looking back, I wish that I had never done anything with anyone else except my wife. That's what I hope. That's what I wish. Now, I know that's very countercultural, and I know that's not normal. I do know that. Um, and I'm not going to get into ins and outs of, well, this is okay, but this isn't okay. My point is, I think that you should probably save yourself completely and purely for your husband or wife. That's my opinion. If you can do that, I think that's the goal. And if your goal is that, rather than not doing one thing, I think you'll probably end up a little bit better off than I did. Did I come across as quickly and fast as I could? Okay. My friend told me this. She said she was... She was a Christian. She was at her boyfriend's house, or he was at her house. They were snuggled up watching a movie, and I guess she made a slight move, nothing really drastically wrong, but just a slight move more than he was used to, and they had their boundaries set up, and, and she had gone maybe a little too far. And um, during the middle of the movie, he got up, walked out of the room, and left and went home. And, and I love that. Like, that stuck out to me. I was like, that is awesome. And, and she, um, she admitted, like, that's, that was character. Maybe they had to talk about it later. But, you know, that, I would say, what glorifies God. And that's a story that stuck out. So we're answering the physical contact Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I... I totally agree with what Aaron is saying like if you if you look at it with that perspective like if like because it's really hard to know like when you're a teenager if this person is your spouse or not it is it's just hard to know that because it you know you're not gonna get married at 16 right like who does that um so it's hard to know that so not knowing that when you know you're younger um if you look at that person as your brother or sister, I know that sounds weird right now, like if you're actually in a dating relationship and you're trying to get to know someone, you still are, until you are actually in that covenant of marriage, you are still to look at them um, as a sister or brother in Christ. And it's, it's kind of hard to describe that and how that's really supposed to look. But in other words, like, you know, you can get to know someone, but yeah, like treat them in a godly fashion, you know, and, and you, you think about all the things that you want to save for your future spouse, instead of just thinking about you, think about how you can protect them as well. Um, Because that's actually a really big responsibility in a relationship is to protect the other person. And um, I would just like, just like, Skip protected me so well, like he was looking out for my purity in our dating relationship and when we were engaged he was trying to protect me and sometimes that meant him um you know just completely you know be like okay go home like get out like bye (laughs) um you know and no matter what he needed to do he always did it and he was so faithful in that and that ministered to me in our relationship more than anything I've ever experienced so that will go so much farther than trying to get what you want. Instead, protect the other person the best you can. This isn't exactly answering that question, but it's kind of a little rabbit trail off of it. Um, Red flag. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you're the only one protecting your physical boundaries, that is a big red flag right? You're not the one. (laughs) Yes. That person is not the one or not the one right now. Um, That is something that you both have to work at. If you're not both working at it, you're not going to be successful. Uh, One person is not strong enough to hold that boundary for both of you, for one thing, and for the other thing that, you know, if if, if the person that you're in a relationship with um, is not holding that boundary as well or striving for that boundary, then they need a heart check. You need to think about where their heart is at and where they're coming from. Um, so, yeah, you both need to be working at it. That's some, When you're in a relationship, that's 
something that you guys should discuss, something that should be open to discussion, you know, like this is where my boundary is, you know, like let's, let's agree, let's agree. That's something that Aaron and I did, we agreed. You know, this is where, this is where our boundaries are. Um, and I mean, we were both, I was 28, he was 36, we were both older, we had both had a lot of previous experience and that doesn't change where our boundaries needed to be because we still um, needed to maintain our purity in our relationship. Um, and so we, we agreed and we, we challenged each other to hold that, you know, and yeah, some, you know, sometimes, you know, as you get into that relationship and it progresses, um, things can be hard and it, it can be hard to hold that boundary when you really love that person and you want to express that physically and that's a gift from God and that's something that he's given to us and that's very natural and something that he's designed to be expressed in marriage, as we all know, right? Um, and yes, but my, my point is that sometimes, sure, one person needs to be stronger in this moment. Sometimes the other person needs to be stronger in this moment, but it's something that you're working towards together and encouraging each other in. Uh, one thing I wanted to add, I mean, so what, so what Angie said, I mean, it, you, it is certainly a thing where both people have to be on board. And if you're, like she said, if you're dating somebody that doesn't have the same boundaries that you do, then that's going to be a problem. But furthermore, and we talk about, you know, only being willing to enter into a relationship with somebody that loves Jesus. And that's incredibly important for that. Because if you don't think that, I mean, it really takes the Holy Spirit to be able to set those boundaries and to live by them. And honestly, if somebody doesn't have Jesus, how can you expect them to have your boundaries at the, at the top of their priority list? They're not going to. Um, so that's just, a, I mean, another reason, um, you know, to make sure that we're making good decisions. Um, I think for, um, I was raised in the same house as Aaron. And uh, in the same way, yeah, we, we didn't, we weren't told a whole lot. Um, certainly that sex before marriage was wrong. Um, and I, I mean, I was blessed to be kind of in a group of guys in my youth group um, that that really took that, you know, setting up boundaries as a, as a very important step. Um, so that was, I mean, that was a blessing for me. It wasn't something that I really got um, at home. Not, you know, not that my, you know, my parents talked about God and we went to church and all those things, but like they never said, now the, I, I remember my dad saying, you need to be safe and you need to be careful. But I don't remember really saying, you know, talking about boundaries and this leads to this and, and any of those things. Um, so I, I was blessed with a, a group of guys that, you know, I hung out with and even more so when I went to Rosedale. Um, that was, I mean, they, they would break out and, you know, they have breakout groups and that was just a common thing. You know, the, this is how you protect your heart. And asking the question, what's okay? I mean, certainly you can't say what's okay at what age, but even to say how far is too far, I mean, you're asking the wrong question. Um, if you, I mean, the, the Bible says not to awaken passion before it's time. And if you can kiss someone without awakening passion, then you're probably doing it wrong. Um, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so it's, I mean... You, you really have to be smart about what's awakening passion within you and knowing where to stop well ahead of that. Because if you just say, okay, you know, this is what I don't want to get to and I can, I can nudge right up to that, you're going to blow by that eventually. The idea is to set it up so that you're not just maintaining a line, but you're maintaining purity in your heart and in your mind. And you're not just doing it for yourself, you're doing it for the other person in the relationship as well. So... The question is not how far is too far and how far is okay. The question is what can I do to maintain my purity and his purity or, or her purity. Thanks. Um, Angie talking about the boundaries of, you know, what have we decided to do to maintain our purity and make sure that you're in agreement. Um, I was very blessed to have Polly's older sister, Evie, and Kristen and Jeremy's mother 
as accountability partners for myself um, when I was dating Chad. We met every week, we prayed together, we looked at each other in the face and asked, so, tell me about your line. And we had to confess if we crossed our line or if we maintained it, <coughs> and we encouraged each other. And um, I just think that um, having people in your life like that, that can look you in the face and ask those hard questions, if you can be honest with them, is really helpful also in, in that. And um, I, don't, I don't really remember a whole lot of what my parents taught me or didn't ta teach me in this time. Um, most of you know my sister died when I was y'all's age, so kind of just forgot life then. <laughs> don't know what conversations we had and didn't have. Um, but I remember um, two things, and I don't want to get in trouble here, but my mom would always say, save your lips for the man you marry. And my dad say, so did you kiss anybody yet? And I'd be like, so is it right? Is it wrong? Does it matter? Does it not? But I think, you know, Chad and Aaron have both said, it's not about how far can you go. It's about what can I do and keep my heart pure and focused on God. So surround yourself with good friends, accountability. Be very clear what your line is because you're going to be tempted to go beyond it. Lots of good stuff they've said. There's not really much to add to that except, you know, maybe to ex um, expound from my personal experience, um, which uh, I, when Chad was talking about it's not a line you're holding, um, but then we say know what your line is. So I think to clarify that a little bit is you have to think about this now. You have to know ahead of time what you think, um, where you are going to land on this. So this is really important. And I'm telling you, I'm going to encourage you again and again and again, partner with your parents on this. They may not know how to do this, um, but you got to figure it out together. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to partner um, completely with my children, but that's the idea. I don't want them alone. I don't want them navigating this alone, and your parents don't want that either. So you can ask them, seek their advice, seek their wisdom without feeling like, great, now they're going to be looking over my shoulder. They are already. No, 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 no. So, so I, but they, you can glean some really good things by saying, what do you think it should be? What do you think I should do? And I say again and again, um, God, it would be nice if God said, thou shalt not kiss before marriage. Okay. Thou shalt not sit together on the couch. That would be fabulous if he said that. It would make it a whole lot easier. But God wants relationship. And so we can ask him in everything, including this, because God designed it. He has a lot to say about it, and he wants to talk to you about it. But to be able to say, is it wrong to kiss? Well, God doesn't say so. But he does say, and I would encourage you to read 1 Corinthians 6. Um, he has a lot to say about fleeing immorality, and then goes on to talk about your body being a temple for him. And those can all sound like just archaic things. Okay, what's that mean? My body's a temple. Um, but the notion is that you were created to house God here on earth and to be a visible representation of that. And so I think when you keep that in mind and you try to strive for someone else to be that as well, and that is your goal, um, then it'll, it'll keep you from doing just what Aaron said. Like if you're told you can't have sex before marriage, well, you're going to do pretty much everything but that. And then you're going to just feel like your line is, I'm not going to... I don't know, um, I, I won't go there, but whatever your line is, then you're going to do everything 
as often as you want, as, with as many people as you want, because that's your line, and as long as you don't cross that, you're okay. And that's just really a dangerous place, I think, to be. Whereas if you just say, I want to honor God, I want to honor others, then you're really not going to get to that place. Because let me tell you, if you think it's frustrating to say, just say, I'm not going there, it is far more frustrating to take steps into that river and not get swept away. Because once you step into that river of passion, it is really overwhelming, as it's meant to be, um, as it's created and designed to be. But it just becomes far more frustrating uh, the, the further you, the deeper you go. And think about it, pray about it, whatever. Um, and it goes along with everything that we've been talking about. But it's 1 Corinthians 10, 23. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. It says, um, of, uh, I use ESV, but anything. It says, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up, right? And so when you're thinking about everything that we're talking about, um, whether, whether it's physical, whether it's being in a relationship, period, whether it's whatever, Think about the fact that, you know, it's okay to do all the things that we're talking about. Um, you know, not sex, but all, all of the things, you know, especially at, at one stage of the game, like she said, it doesn't say this, it doesn't say this. But what God is saying in this verse and in, in all the things that we're talking about is, you know, just because it's okay doesn't mean it's right. Just because it's okay doesn't mean it's right right now. Just because it's okay doesn't mean, all things are lawful, but that doesn't make them beneficial, right? And so those are the things, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. Keeping in mind that lawful is still not going outside of God's. Right, 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 right. Laws yeah. for you. And so like, those are the things that we, we, we need to remember too, is, is like, there's, there's, there's our lines, there's God's lines, there's, you know, hopefully those things are close. Um, but then there's things that, like, you know what? I know I'm allowed to do this. Um, according to my parents. My parents, Skip's parents, hey, go ahead and date whoever you want. I'm allowed to do that. That doesn't mean it's beneficial though, right? Because you know you, and you know, and you know, like I knew me, and I was like, man, that's what I want, but someone should have slapped me in the face and said, you're an idiot. That's the last thing you need, right? Um, so I'm gonna, I'll leave that there, but that's just something that the Lord shared with me, so I wanna share with you quickly. Um, Rita, um, I'm gonna let you answer this one. And then if anyone else has anything to add quickly to this, we'll do that. And then, Chad, I have a question for you because you already touched on it. Um, so question for you, Rita. So we've all talked about how God must be your top number one priority before entering a healthy relationship. How do I practically do that? How do I practically make God my top priority, top priority. before I'm in a relationship? How do I do that? Um, just the same way you're in a relationship with anybody else. You spend time with them. Um, and I know that can be really mystical or, or whatever it is that you're trying to figure that out. Well, what does that look like? I mean, I can call my friend up. I can text my friend. I can see my friend, hang out with my friend. It's a little bit harder to understand what that really looks like when you're talking about being in relationship with God. I know some of you have gotten that. I know some of you are trying to navigate that. Some of you are trying to figure that out. Um, but you get to know someone by spending time with them. And, and I would say you, <coughs> you can hear things from your best friend in the way they say something. So when your friend says, I'm fine, you know they're not fine. And the more time you spend with, with God and his word, because that's the primary way that he speaks to you, and I know God speaks through our hearts, especially as you're, as you're maturing in that, as you, are, as you are new in that, he will speak profoundly to you because he's encouraging you and calling you into that relationship and knows that you haven't had a lot of time under your belt to actually read and study his word and know his voice. But the more you read his word, Find a, find a translation that you get. The more you read his word, you understand his heart. You understand whether something that you're hearing lines up with something that it sounds like he would really say. And you would begin to recognize whether the enemy is whispering to you or whether the Lord is speaking to you. But spending time with him the same way you would with your friends. You know what? I get up every morning. 
and I read his word. And some mornings, it would be tempting to think, I got nothing, okay? No, no light on, no revelation, no, ah, oh, this is just what I needed. Most of the time, that's not what happens. But I know what's happening is seeds of truth are being sown. I'm getting to know his character. So when I'm faced with something, it's amazing how those things come back. And the Holy Spirit calls to mind what I've put in there. And he'll do the same for you. It sounds, it's really tough to make God first. It's tough at any age. It's really tough at this age because there is no immediate reward, it seems. Does that, do you understand? Like you can invest and you can invest and feel like it doesn't make a difference. Like I don't really see God at work. I don't really see what he's doing. But it's like investing your money. When you invest your money, at the outset, you don't see a lot coming back. You're not going to get a lot of interest on that, but it is a compounding, okay? The same is true when you invest time with God. It is compounded over time, and you have to start somewhere. Don't start when you're 30, when you have the opportunity to start at 15. You've lost 15 years of investment, and I would say the same is true of your money. Start now. <laughs> Don't wait till you're 30. Get that compounded interest. I am living in the years of compounding. I am telling you, there is no better place to be, and I wish I had started at 15 because the fruit from it is worth it. Know that it starts small, but listen, I know it will never be as powerful or as passionate right now. It is no way your relationship with God, and I'm just going to be honest, is not going to be anything yet that is more than just obedience and a choice because you're not going to get the return that you would get from your friends right now. Because you've got them patting you on the back. You've got them going, you go, girl. You've got them going, man, you look good, okay? You've got that, and you can't hear that from God. But I'm telling you, when you spend that time there, you're doing something, and eventually you're going to hear that you go, girl, from God, and it's going to, it is going to overwhelm you in a way that no human being can speak to you. Um, and so, so I... I can't say enough about this, and I'm just going to have to cut myself off. Take the time, even if it feels like you're not getting anything from it. You will, and it will be worth it. And, 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 I, and, that there's, and I can't say that enough for you to really grasp that, because I know that immediately you won't. You'll get up every day, you'll read your Bible, and it's simply because somebody told you to. And if you do it just because I told you to, I'm happy about that. Do it just because God says so. If you do anything because God says so, whether or not you think you're getting something from it, I promise you a reward is coming. And it is better than that passion that you might experience with um, a relationship or that encouragement that you might get from a girlfriend, which I say, great in all of that, but it is not ever going to feed what you have inside of you that is so hungry it cannot yes I'm sorry. i do that was I, long i'm sorry I was, no i was good i do want to i want to brag uh rita said something and, and and i'm in no way nitpicking about it but i do i'm, I'm gonna just say this i'm gonna brag on you guys right um i, I don't want you guys to hear like hey you're never going to have the real relationship with you, you know, the same relationship as we do until you're, blah, blah. no, I, I want to brag on you guys. There are some of you that have a better relationship with the Lord, I know, than I did at your age. And some, yes. of, some of you have a paralleling relationship with the Lord than I do right now. It's close. You know what I mean? Some of you are chasing after the Lord. Some of you are chasing after the fullness of the Holy Spirit and, and you come up to the altar and you get Justin to pray for you. Like some of you are going after it. And so I want to continue to encourage that. And I know that Rita's not saying, oh, you know, don't yes, worry about absolutely. it until you're my age. No, that's not what she's saying. But I want you to really, really get into it. Like I, we want you to press into everything um, the Lord has for you. So go after it. And yes, the expounding. 
I but you can have that now. I absolutely echo yeah. that. It, it's just it's just harder to feel that yeah. right now, maybe. But continue to do yeah. that because the reward is there. And I know I know I know lots of you are there. And I'm telling you, lots of you, in my opinion, know greater what it is to follow after Jesus than some of my contemporaries. So it's not yeah. an age thing. I'm simply saying that when it feels like it's not as tangible, keep pressing in, keep pursuing God, make him first, and he will add, seek ye first the kingdom, and he will add these all things to you, okay? All those things that you desire, um, he will satisfy in a way that they can't outside of him. Yeah. D does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Um, anything pressing that you feel like we need to add to the top priority? Okay, Chad. Um, you started talking about this, and then we can, I'm not sure if this will be, this might be the last question, but you started talking about dating a non-Christian, right? Um, so, there are two different questions that all come to the same place. I'm going to allow you to go first. And then if we have any other things to go along. One of the questions was, um, what do you do if you're already in a relationship with a non-Christian? And then another question that rivals that, not rivals, that goes along with that is, um, you know, we talked about unequally yoked. I talked about that. And like how much, in your opinion, you know, obviously non-Christians, Christians, that's one thing. But even to take a step farther, um, what if, what if you as Christians don't agree on everything? What if you don't agree on, you know, say politics, say, you know, how many kids, say whatever, like, what if you don't agree on those things? Can you still be together? Can you work on that? Like, what does that look like? Non-Christians and then go. Um, well, I, I remember this, we had a pretty in-depth discussion about this at Sandy Cove what, two, three years ago, yeah. um, because somebody was asking, um, you know, is it okay? What about this? And I mean, as we, I, as I think we said on the first night, I mean, the, the thing that always comes up is, well, I can, maybe I can save them. <laughs> maybe I can lead them. to Jesus. Look, that's important that you lead them to Jesus, but you don't do that while you're dating them. You know, I mean, it's just, that is not a good reason to ever date a person. Um, and I mean, to be honest, Aaron, and I would not be on this earth if our mom had, you know, my dad was not a Christian when they met, um, but, you know, they really loved each other. And there were many times that she said, thought to herself, you know, this isn't maybe the best, the best plan for me, but they just, they really loved each other. And, you know, eventually my dad accepted Christ and, you know, they, I have two brothers that, or serving the Lord, and, you know, we've, I, God can redeem a situation, but that's mm -hmm. no, no reason to say that, oh, look at this time it worked out okay, look at this time it worked out okay, look at this time it worked out okay. Um, there's always a better way um, than to do that. And, and let's not sidestep the pain. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I love my mom, I love my dad. Pain that they had to walk through because of that decision. Yeah, there's great things on this side. Sure, there's, there's redemption, there's great things. But my mom has walked through pain because of that decision, and she would do it again. That's how awesome my mom is. But like, let's not sidestep the, the, the pain and the, the chaos that you know, it, it, it yeah. ensued, right? And there, I mean, and the, and the thing is, I mean, if, if, if you have two people and one of them is in that situation, they really love each other, you know, you're going to get to that thing where you say, okay, if I have to, I'll get saved for you. Yeah. And then that comes down to what we talked about two weeks ago, where it's not just about unequally yoked as Christians versus non-Christians. It's about being with someone that loves Jesus and is following him with all of their hearts because that's what you need, not just someone that's prayed a prayer um, or someone that comes to church on Sundays but still kind of lives how they want to, um, but they're doing the minimum to make so that they get to spend time with you. Um, so I, with this whole thing, man, it's, it's, it's tough, and I know that how it applies and in every situation, it. I would prefer if, if any of you guys are wrestling with that, that you find me and we'll, we'll, we'll have a talk. Um, because I think there, 
there are a lot of a lot of sides to it and like with anything it's it's best sometimes just to be in relationship and say hey tell me all about it and let's let's talk about it and let's pray about it together yeah um but if i had to say something that's kind of a, a broad you know thing for everybody uh, that's probably what i would say now what was part two I'd... um the the part two is what if you like what if you know what oh, happens when you and joyce don't agree on everything how do you like, uh, what, are it's you, over. It's over. Right, right. That's it's it. Just, so I, I walk right. out the door. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, obviously, you're married now. But like, in your, in your dating relationship, I, we assume that there were things that you didn't like lockstep agree with. You know yeah, what? Like, she maybe didn't want to live in Delaware. And <laughs> here I am. <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. No, the, Can't believe you I mean, for that. there, there are certainly. Uh, there are a lot of conversations that need to be had when you're entering into a relationship. And there are some of them that should be had sooner rather than later. Like, you know, do we want to serve Jesus yeah. is a sooner one. Um, but also, you know, like Joyce for the longest time was telling herself that she could not like me because I was not going to be a missionary. And she was convinced that she was going to be a, an overseas missionary and I mean, for quite some time now, you know, Don't we, yeah, Angie said she was, never she was going to Africa a or something, you know, I was at the time, <laughs> but, uh, so I mean, yeah, all those conversations do need to be had. I mean, I think that if you're both following God with all of your hearts, I mean, you can, de you can determine which of those things are, Hey, look, I'm not sure that we can best follow God if God is calling you to this and me to this. You know, you have to, you have to be able to get to a point of peace about that. Um, but, but there are, you know, there are things that, you know, maybe one of you wants to be a vegetarian and one of you doesn't. Well, <laughs> that sounds like a funny thing, but you better talk about that. Yeah. Someone's um, doing the cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there are, lot, there are lots of, there are lots of things that I say that, no. you know, I'm not going to, there, I don't think there's a list of things that are overcomable and a list of things that aren't overcomable, but it's so important to talk about all of those things. Yeah. I think the one thing too is like, like, like Chad said, there's an, there's an overarching like best way, yeah. but guys, like, please, 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 please. <laughs> Just do your best. You know what I mean? That's what, we're, that's what we're hoping for. Please don't leave tonight feeling condemned. Please don't feel tonight feeling like we don't love you or care about you or we, you think that you're already done. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're casting out the, the, the best net if, 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 if possible. If, if, that's already, if that ship is already sailed, man, you're good, man. Just, just, it's, it's a do your best from now on. It's, hey, just strive for the best now. It's, it's all those things. And and like he said, man, just, you can just talk to us about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, I, I told the guys last week, um, me and Angie were not um, dating for very long, and we were engaged for very short amounts of time. Um, but I'm going to tell you, and I told the guys, we spent, we, yeah, we did binge a show, um, but we spent a lot of time um, on the balcony swing at our parents' house talking about everything. We had like one question that we do here. We did that then. I said, all right, one question, go. And we talked about it for hours. And then it was your turn. Oh, that was my turn. No, 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 that was my question. It was so long ago, we don't remember. But like, it's that stuff, man. Just talk about that stuff, you know? So if it's, you know, politics or kids. I mean, how many TV shows have you guys watched? Those of you that watch TV. Yeah, we are having the great, we were so in love. And then he said he didn't want kids, done. Yeah, you know I mean, like, that's a real thing, guys. Please talk about this stuff, because that's a big deal. Angie didn't want to have kids until she met me, but, yeah, okay. She, she, apparently, she broke up with a dude. Never mind. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> more on the non-Christian Christians and um, things that you might have to talk about before you get married. Okay. Not on that. No. Okay. I think that's yeah. yeah. Um, so we got those questions. We got those questions. All right. Closing comments? Huh? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I do. There was another question that I really, really liked, and I'm going to get Skip to answer it. 
um, because I feel Dear. like he's really got the inside track on this. Mm. <laughs> Why does Paul say it's better to not marry? Ooh. I want to know the answer to Paul this. Paul is a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think just down the road, if you could... There's a gift of singleness. There's um, Paul's basically saying he can build the kingdom of God. He was called to build the kingdom of God, and he could do it a much better way without marrying. There's also context there. The world was about to blow up with Nero and spiritual persecution, much more than America here. Um, the best thing I've heard on this is John Piper was saying about singleness. He's like, well, what, you know, somebody will say, well, yeah, but it's so great to have Christ, but I also want to get married. And John Piper's like, yeah, but what's a thimble in an ocean? And I was like, whoa. So um, that's how that hit me. That's all I got. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing that Paul was saying, and this is my opinion, I think the biggest thing that Paul is saying is, hey, if you don't get married, if that's not a distraction, you're probably going to chase after the Lord a little bit strongly. It's, you have one focus, um, and it doesn't get swayed. Um, yeah. I, I read that, and I, and I told Paul, and I told Jesus to his face, I said, I'm not called to that, <laughs> and I don't want to be called to that. And Paul even talked, I mean, Paul even clarifies that yeah. later on. He says, you know, if, if a man is married, he has to ask, you know, how am I yeah. to please my wife? Yeah. He, he doesn't just have the ability, like Paul did, to absolutely go after it and do yeah. all the things. I mean, he couldn't have done all the things that he did if he had to worry about a family. And I mean, that's yeah. just, I mean, for, for Paul and for that, the missionary journey that he was on and, and what Jesus. he was called to. Yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but was it also Paul that said, if you burn with passion, it is better for you to be married? Right. So if you know you're burning when you're older and it's time, get married. <laughs> like, that's super important. Wait for um, the one. Yeah. <laughs> wait for the one. Don't just wait to be burning. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thank you. We sorry. might want to zip that one off yep, the copyright, sorry. too. But. Sorry. Um, no, but that is also in scripture. So he yeah. addressed both sides of that. Some people are okay. Single. I know someone who is. They are a strong woman of God. She is fine. Like she's not miserable. She's not just sitting around like, where is he? She is just into, she's serving him. She's independent. She is an awesome example of someone who is running after the Lord in her singleness and she's completely okay. And that's so, like, that's amazing. Um, but then there are others who um, God has put a desire in them, a passion in them. They want to be a spouse. They want to serve another person. They want to raise kids. Like, and it's not just this thing that sounds cool. It's this burning desire in them that they know God put in them. And that's there for a reason. So if that is within you even now, because I think it kind of started for me when I was around your age. Like, if that's in you now, don't doubt the Lord. He put that in you. It's there for a reason, and he will see it to fruition as you are faithful to him. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, you can keep that. Okay. I think um, there's. I think we could all say the same thing. Like, there, there. I know for me, there was a burning, you know what I mean, so on, and it's not a lustful burning. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Um, it was a burning to be married. It was a burning to share my life with someone. Um, so let's make sure that that's said. It's not burning with lust um, necessarily. But also, secondarily, um, and I mean this with every stitch of my being, I, I couldn't have married Angie if she didn't want to have kids. Burning desire in my heart to have kids. Uh, I want girls. I hope that that's how it happens. But I have a burning desire to be able to share my life with kids. Um, and it has nothing to do with anything other than I feel like that God put that on my heart. Um, I love coaching. I love teaching. I love what we do here. Um, if I could adopt all of you, I would. Um, but it's something that like the Lord laid on my heart to do. Um, um, so we're going to do closing arguments. But in your closing argument. Um, I told the guys how I feel about this, but I want you to answer this question. Do you think it's, oh, I'll, I'll just, I'll say it this way. It, I'm going to say, is it possible? But what does it look like if you're close friends with someone of the opposite gender? Is it possible 
if your closest friend is the opposite gender, and what does that look like? <laughs> okay. Guys, you know my opinion. But from a female point of view, I want to know if, how you feel about that. Okay. And then closing argument. All right. I'm actually very passionate about this topic. Skip Good. knows this very well. Um, we've had lots of conversations about this because um, we were both single for a long time. And, you know, when you're single, you make a lot of different friends. And some of them are of the opposite gender. But I will say this. So in my, person, my personal convictions when I was single, as far as the opposite gender goes, um, I, I think I, I did struggle with a little bit of legalism in my singleness because I thought if I walk somewhere alone with a guy, I have to marry him. Like it was ridiculous. It was, that's, that's extreme. But basically like I, I was, I wouldn't go out um, to a meal with a guy by myself because like I had taken what I had been taught way too extreme. It was, I don't think that that was correct. Just to clarify that. But in that, I feel like God brought a balance about as I got older. And um, I believe that you can have friends of the opposite gender, totally okay, but to have a best friend of the opposite gender um, and to say that, like, they're your best friend, you guys share, you know, your most intimate thoughts with each other, you, you know, you you share everything with each other. Okay, so that forms a bond between you guys, um, whether you realize it or not. And so I would say, if you know that person is not someone that you're interested in romantically or that you can marry, um, like for me personally, I kind of was very quick to friend zone guys, and I, and I was very much all about brotherizing them pretty quickly when I was single. Because in my mind, I'm like, that could be somebody's husband. So like, I don't want to get too close to that guy because when I get married, that, relate, that friendship, that relationship, it can't be as close because when you're married, there are very, there's, it's a very um, important boundary to have around your marriage to not have those close friendships with opposite genders when you're married. You can be friends, but you know, you're not gonna be, I'm not gonna be talking to a, another guy on the phone at night about things I need prayer for and I'm married. That is so inappropriate. Like, it's just not even, you know what I mean? Like, would you want your spouse to be doing that with someone? So in other words, my, my whole point is, is think of it that way. If you know that that person is probably someone else's spouse at some point in life, why would I start investing in a really close friendship with them when it's going to have to change later? Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Polly had to tell a few of my old friends that were girls to quit calling once we got married or something. We were engaged. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You have closing arguments? And you should oh. really expand on that more. Well, I mean, just, I was, a, <laughs> I was a Bible study leader, and so I was almost counseling girls. Is that what it was? You really need to expand. Like, give me this one. Okay. So, no, he was, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Sweet skip. Okay. <laughs> so he is the biggest heart in the entire world, but he does not always have, I'm just going to say it because I think oh. you know, he doesn't have the biggest discernment bucket. And he, okay. And that happens to be one of my like huge antennas is discernment. Like that's a big thing. So he's, you know, um, he's the gift of all kinds of other things. But anyway, the point is, is that that wasn't like on his radar to be like looking out for too close of girl friendships. He definitely was very wise in things, but there was some girls that were probably getting too close that later those friendships did need to change once we knew we were going to get married. And so those are some hard conversations he had to have with those girls that didn't that didn't have to have happened if those friendships hadn't gotten too close, if that makes sense. So that's all. Shouts to Chelsea, Shannon. No, I'm kidding. Um, closing arguments. I'll be quick. Uh, to finish up the story about Megan Vosberg, that girl I was telling you about. So three weeks after I asked for her parents' blessing and they didn't give it, um, she told me she was dating Addison Scott, one of my good friends. So... That's how things work out, folks. It was cool. Um, 
And then I also want to say uh, closing arguments. So I did feel led to share this. Polly might have to clean up what I'm going to say, but hear me out. Can we be mature here? Because one of the best advice my mom gave me, and I'm, I'm being honest, so is this all right to share? <laughs> you said you have to say it in a different way, but it's basically um, for the guys out there that girls will throw themselves at you. Can you explain that more? All right. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. So what I'm, what I'm saying is the world makes it like look like um, being mature here, getting a girl is like the hardest thing to do, and girls are just so like, you know, hard to get in the worldly way. And since we're mature here, my mom warned me. She was like, Skip, girls are going to throw themselves at you. And I needed to hear that because... That way, if that had happened, it wouldn't be some surprising thing like, oh my gosh, this is what all the commercials say is like the hardest thing ever. So if take it or leave it, that I'm throwing that out there as in like, be aware that it's a broken world and people with broken hearts are going to do things that you don't need to be surprised at. Does that make sense? And explain how you should respond though, then. Well, you, you flee from yeah. immorality. You walk the other way. And um, so that might be years down the road. Um, on a lighter note, uh, what are we talking about? Dating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <that's, laughs> okay, really? I think that is my closing <laughs> argument is... Um, <laughs> Hey, get the, I, I get mean, the mic I, I shared my heart last week with the fellas. <laughs> when, when I broke up with the girl I was with before, mm. I, I still had a desire to lay down my life, to give my life away to someone. And so as, as um, broken as our, our relationship was, God had prepared me and I, I, before I met Polly, I wanted to give my life away to somebody else. And so, speaking of dating, like that's that was when it was right. And um, uh, okay, so I will clean up a little bit of what you said about the throwing themselves at you. Okay, so um, that doesn't mean all girls, first of all. <laughs> Okay, they're all like sitting here, like we're not gonna do that. <laughs> like, what's, what are you saying about us right this is now? Broken world. Right, right, right. So no, but the point is, I think anyone can do that to anyone, though, on either side. Obviously, anyone that's experienced brokenness or pain and is just searching for acceptance and to be loved by someone. Um, could be completely oblivious to how they're crossing boundaries that they shouldn't be or completely just throwing out anything out the window. And just like how we talked about how those things need to be talked about and on the same page is so important. And also that you're ready to flee that temptation if it were to happen to you. Um, and that you're ready to stand and say, look, you know, Jesus is the most important thing to me. And I think what it all comes down to is how important is he to you? You need to ask yourself that before you get in a relationship. Or if you are in one, still ask yourself that. How important is Jesus to me? Would I be willing to lay down everything for him, including an ungodly relationship? So important because your heart is your soul and it's it's a part of who you are and when your heart is involved with someone else um and it hasn't been completely surrendered to christ you're giving your heart away to someone other than him basically so that was kind of a roundabout way that's my closing yeah and uh, i'll i'll just do mine quickly in in all the things that we are talking about over here like i i want to encourage it probably should go both ways but I haven't experienced it that way. So I'm going to encourage the girls um, to know that guys look at things completely different than you do. And if you, and I shared this with you, I think. I know I shared it with the guys. Um, 
but some of some of you need to be very careful on you know how you interact whether it's hugs whether whatever it is um because i for one was in a place where i was searching for that relationship and you know some of these guys i mean i mean in this group i speak to the world not this group um these guys are all strong and they're not looking for any of that uh, maybe they are but the point is um really try hard to guard their hearts um, because they may see it. If they're anything like me, they will see your kindness. They will see your compassion. They'll see your physical affection, although you may say, oh, yeah, it was just uh, it was nothing. They may or may not see it that way. So I encourage you to be, A, very upfront with your intentions, and B, just think of that. I'm not saying change anything you're doing. I'm not saying any of that. All I'm saying is be mindful of how guys think in comparison to how girls think. My opinion on the topic, if I told the guys, I said it is next to, next to, it, well, especially when you're married, it's next to impossible to be a holistically just friends with a guy and a girl. I speak that from myself. It was impossible for me to just be friends with a girl. Impossible. Impossible. Why? Why would I do that? Number one. And number two, it just, it was impossible because at some point, someone is going to want to have a relationship. At some point. I, this is my opinion. And I can be wrong. And if I'm wrong, no problem. In my life, it was impossible. Um, and I want to spend the rest of my closing arguments. I, I want to, I, I just feel like the Lord laid this on my heart. Um, and so I just want to, I want to just give a kudos, as they say, um, to Skip tonight. Um, I, I just, I, I want you guys to know, like, Skip really did this thing the right way. Um, so much so that I almost had to beat him up. And he knows this story, but I almost did. Um, he broke Polly's heart initially, and he had the best, the best, looking back now, I know his heart, he had the best intentions, the best intentions. And I still almost had to beat him up. I'm just saying, um, but, but Skip did it the right way, guys. He really did. And he guarded her heart, and he took care of her, so much so that I thought we were, I was going to have to step in um, because I didn't have a wife at this time, and I had to, you know, protect Polly. I don't know why. <laughs> why I chose Polly in this, I don't know. No, I was like, dude, I was, ugh, I was, we were, I was driving somewhere. Um, but no, yeah, 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 it's, it's good, it's good. But anyway. Yeah, but anyway, like I just. Do you need to clean up what he's saying? I, I think we're good. I don't think so. I, yeah, I'm unfiltered. No cleaning up needed. Uh, but I did want to. I did want to say that. I don't know if that ever got said before, but I felt like that that needed to be said there. I'm good. You're good. Okay. All right. Um, well, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for listening so intently these past three weeks. Um, each one has been a long session, and we've really felt your guys' attention, and we really appreciate that. Um, this topic, like Rita said last week, she said this is a brief overview of a very complex topic. And so my closing arguments is that, um, I'll, I'll speak for all seven of us up here, but specifically for me and Aaron, this is something that we're passionate about. Um, we're created for relationships and after your decision to follow the Lord, this is the most important and most impactful decision that you will make in your life. Yeah. Um, and we're passionate about walking with you through these decisions. Um, we, our, our priority is to come alongside your parents because they are the most important voices in your lives on this topic. Um, in no way are we trying to supersede what they say or sidestep what they say. Um, if what we say doesn't line up with what they say, you go with what they say. They win. Um, they're the authority in your life right now. Um, but that being said, we are very passionate about this being, and, and this isn't just something that we talk about now and then we're done. Yeah. You know, like this is something that we want to be an open discussion. And so, um, any of you, if you guys want to sit down and talk about this more, we would love that. Um, boys, if you want a woman's perspective on something, girls, if you want a man's perspective on something, we would love to sit down with you together 
And um, we're going to have a big house <laughs> that you are allowed to take over anytime. Yes. That Angie says. <laughs> Um, yes, it's true. You're welcome anytime. I'm on record. I'm being recorded saying that. Um, that's a big step. That's because she married me. <laughs> yes, she it never is. Would have said yes, that. it is. Um, but truly, and this is this is a topic that um, there can be a lot of embarrassment. There can be shame. There can just be a stigma to it. Um, even if you don't come with baggage, you know, there it can just be kind of feel icky to talk about. Um, and so I want to set you free from that and let you know that there's not going to be judgment from any of us. Yeah. If you want to share um, whatever questions you have, um, it's just re really, really open. And um, there's a lot of different experiences yeah. up here on stage. So um, take advantage of that. Take advantage of the resources that you have. Um, I was raised in a very sheltered way, um, but not really equipped to walk that out. And, um, you know, I, I made a lot of bad choices as a late teen, early adult. Um, and there are a lot of heartaches that I might be able to speak to and I might be able to help you avoid, who knows. Um, or just walk with you through. So that's it. If there is one thing that I could share with you, two things that I would pass <laughs> along. There's only just one thing. Um, but I thought if I started it out like a proverb, <laughs> it would sound wise. Um, <laughs> I was ready. Yeah. And I've had to say Edge two things. <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The, the main thing that I would encourage you to do is just to keep things in the right perspective, in the right priority. Um, so for myself, as a, as a teenager, I mean, I, I wanted Jesus to be my first priority, and, you know, I was seeking after God, but I know that I let way too much, way too much of my emotional energy go into wishing that this could happen or wishing that I could, you know, make this work. And, you know, who was the right person for me? And 16 years old, trying to find it, you know. And, I mean, to my credit, I, I wasn't interested in just dating people for the heck of it. Um, you know, I knew that it needed to point toward marriage. But I was way too focused on it before I was ready to be. And that's what I would encourage you guys just Really, I mean, I wasted so many years. I mean, God must have had to try so hard to make none of these things work out. You know, I mean, God God For protected real. me, you know, from so many things where either I would like someone at the wrong time or it just, you know— God had a plan for me, and I, I thank him for that, and I thank, I thank, yeah. I'm thankful that he— didn't give me the things that I was asking for. Yep. And so, you know, you guys might be really frustrated with some of this stuff and saying, you know, if only I could do this or have a relationship with this person, then my life would be better. You know, God might be protecting you from that because that might not be what's best for you. Yep. And um, I wasn't ready to here, I remember I used to go outside and run six miles and just be so worked up and going hard and like just punishing my body because I was just, I had so much angst about why, you know, why isn't any of this stuff working out where, you know, I should have just been able to thank God for the position that he had me in. And, you know, given, you know, given all that energy just to focusing on him um, and knowing that he had it under control. You know, God had the best plan for me, and it, it worked out. Um, but that, that's the main thing I would say is just that I know how brutally hard it is to be in that, that stage and wanting, wanting that to happen. But in this time that you're called to wait, um, just take advantage of it. That's what I would say. Um, I was not maybe wise to the ways of men as a youngster. And all of my best friends in high school and college were guys, and I had no idea 
what they might have been thinking in their heads because for me, they were, um, I guess, a place of safety and shelter and comfort, but like I never thought of them in any way other than a friend or a brother. Um, and what they thought of me, I have no idea. And the, if you're watching, I apologize if I messed you up forever. <laughs> um, but, you know, Skip's parents, you know, he jokingly said, oh, go date a lot of people. I think it's important to know a lot of people of the opposite sex. Spend time in groups together. See them as your brother um, or sister. Because you need to know um, what character traits you're looking for in a person. Yeah. You need to see what personalities you're drawn to, what, you know, like so many different things. And um, <clears throat> my kids will roll their eyes, but my grandpa always told us this. <clears throat> he said, first you make a list and then you pray over the list. And when the list is right, you put it in your head and your heart. And when you're dating somebody, you want to make sure that when your head and your heart match that you know what's right, but don't let your head run away like you don't have a heart, and don't let your heart run away like you don't have a brain in your head. So there's yeah. my remarks. <laughs> um, I, I would ditto some of what Chad said in terms of don't despise where you are. This is an awesome season. Um, don't just be so anxious for the next one that you miss what's right here, right now. Um, with that said, I also um, agree with Joyce in that I, I heavily encourage my children to have opposite sex relationships. But I also heavily encourage them to understand that they, do, they will look a little different at this age. Um, and how they cultivate those should be very transparent and very out in the open. I want them friends with every one of you young men sitting out there, and I would add to that that not just for you guys, but you ladies, I seriously mean this when I say this, you are some of the most stellar young people I've ever known, and I am so personally proud of the fact that you are in my girls' lives. I heavily encourage, and, and again, if I'm speaking, your parents know you more than any of us, irregardless of them, you thinking they came from another planet. <laughs> but I want my girls to cultivate relationships with every young lady every young man, but I want them to do that transparently and openly so that they can be what they're intended to be. And right now, as we've said, that's a brother-sister thing. Um, and there will come a time when, when some light's going to go on and Samara will be the next one, I think. Um, who knows? <laughs> you never know with that one. Um, that, that there is something that goes, hmm, suddenly this doesn't feel like brother to me. And we may have to explore what that looks like and where she is and all of that. But I say that to say, let those relationships be out in the open. Don't spend a lot of time texting your problems to the opposite sex. Talk to, find some buddies. When she talked about having this group that met, man, I encourage everyone to do that. Um, have on, they need to be ongoing conversations, just like Angie spoke of. This isn't a one-time thing. This isn't a three-night thing, and then you've got it figured out. Um, this, we understand that this is, this is hard, and we're not at a place where we think that, that you're going to be able to manage it just because we, came, we sounded like we knew what we were talking about. Okay, we, we know that you're going to get in situations where it's tough and you will never be met with condemnation, I believe, from anyone up here. I would tell you this in closing. Your value is not based on your thoughts, your feelings, as I spoke of, or your behavior. There is nothing that you can think or do 
that is going to change your value because God made you in his image, and that is valuable no matter what. So never listen to a voice that says otherwise. Everything else is reaping and sowing, and we're talking about these things simply because we want you to sow in to God's blessing. That's all. It's not about value. It's not about you screwed up, and so now take plan B. Yeah. Okay, that's not it, and that's just what I would hope to leave you with. Yeah, that's good. I do. I, I'm glad they all spoke because I, I do need to step off the ledge. Like I, I we do encourage you guys to be friends, and it, it is not impossible um, for you guys to be friends. I'm sorry if it came across that I said that because I no, don't. And, no, no, and no, no, I don't no, want no, to. No, no. I, I'm, I'm making sure. <laughs> I, I know who I am um, because I'm very black and white and passionate about things. Um, that's not what I'm saying. We, we, we all feel the same way. Like I feel like, um, and I've never came across and said it this way, but I do feel like youth group was the best environment um, a lot of times to learn, you know, the, the type of people that you're attracted to um, personality-wise, maybe physically-wise too, but, um, but in general, just I feel like this is a good place, a safe place where you can, um, but the bad news is, you know, you can, and the thing that we are striving, and I know that you've heard me say this, we're striving to make this this place uh, a safe place, um, because youth group was not a safe place where I went, um, because we made it, we made it a not safe place. We found the dark corners. We found the places where we could be alone. So we are trying to create an environment where you guys can all be together, be friends, and I do think that that's possible um, for you guys just to be friends and learn more about each other. Like, what better place, a safe environment where your parents trust you to come, you know, and hang out with each other? Um, and so, like, that's that's the environment, that's the place that we're trying to create for you guys. And I and I hope and I and I, hey, yes, I want to applaud you. Yes. Um, I want to I want to just thank you so much for the way that you've taken the things that we say. And you've taken it. Like you have, I, as far as I know, I mean, I know that we make YouTube videos sometimes without my knowledge. <laughs> it's a joke. But to my knowledge, we haven't had anyone sneaking outside. We haven't had anyone sneaking upstairs. We haven't had any, like, you know, the young bucks, you know, they do what they do. Um, but, you know, generally, yeah. Um, generally, you guys aren't hiding <laughs> trying to find each other. So <laughs> nice job. And I thank you for that and honoring us in that way because let's, in, in all honesty, I wasn't, I loved my youth pastor with all of my heart, greatest guy on earth. I didn't honor him the way that I hope that you guys and you guys have honored us. And so I just want to thank you for that. Um, so yeah, hopefully anything else I need to clean up? I say dumb stuff sometimes. And can I say too, I'm not your youth leader. Okay, and I recognize that all of these guys are, and, and I'm just here as the old lady, I guess. <laughs> um, but oh my goodness, as my, I, I, what I said to you, I echo here because these are some of the most amazing leaders. I don't trust my children <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of people, but I trust them wholeheartedly here. And, um, and so... I, we had to work I hard I want to say thank trust. you. I know. <laughs> I want to say thank you to you all for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, let me pray. It's 8.30 for those of you that don't have phones and can't look at the back wall. Um, but we just thank you again. Like what Angie said, thank you so much for paying attention. And I need to apologize for the way that, you know, we talked for hours and we didn't leave you a lot of playtime. Um, but next week, we're going to have another fun night. We're going to, you know, break, break the tension, if you will, I guess. Um, but we're going to play games. If, um, if Skip has something that he and Luke want to do, you can do that. But no then we'll... Games. No, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> too close. Too far. Um, but no, and then we'll bring board games again. Angie's got some new games that she really is excited about. Maybe she'll be here. She's not feeling bad. But thank you for that pregnancy and, and environment. You know, that announcement meant so much to us. Um, anyway, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's time for him to stop. Yeah. Lord, Lord, we just thank you for this night. And we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done um, during these three weeks. And Lord, we just pray um, that these three weeks have 
set a foundation for many, 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 many more discussions to come, more um, things that we can learn, things that we can um, strive for together. And Lord, we do pray that you know you would be our number one priority, no matter what stage of life we're in. But Lord, especially Lord, in these kids' lives, we just pray um, that they would seek you with all of their hearts and know, because they know your voice, um, who that person is. You know whether they're in their lives now or not. We we pray, Lord, that you would just give them wisdom into what you have for them. And Lord, like Chad said, to know the difference between now and later, and know that you do protect us now for the one that's to come, that you do save us a lot of times from those um, destructive relationships. Lord, that's what you do, but you know we do have a part to play too in, in saving ourselves. So Lord, we just wanna pray, um, yeah. We just wanna pray peace over these guys. We wanna pray, Lord, that you would just help them know how loved they are, how valuable they are. Um, and we're not, we're not speaking law we're not speaking um, constriction over them. Man, we're just, we're just speaking the best that you have for us, and we just want the best for them. We love them so much and just want the best for them as you do. And so, Lord, that's what we, that's what we speak, Lord. We just speak the best for them. We just, we just pray the best over them, and we just pray, Lord, that they would seek you with all their hearts. And, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the family that you've created here. You've created here. We have great intentions, Lord, but you've created this family. Like Rita said, these are some great, great, great young people, and we've been so blessed with them, and you've created this family here. So, Lord, we just thank you for that, Um, and we just pray that you would just be honored in everything that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love you guys.